screen. So she'll tell me, hey, you cut out. Can you repeat that? And I will make sure I do so. We are super excited about this one. Um, as you may recall, uh, it was maybe a month or so ago that I put something out on Facebook uh, that was, you know, just kind of my feelings on what I'm seeing in the industry and what the mistakes I'm seeing with a lot of brokers, owners, team leaders, agents leading teams. And um, it, it revolved a lot around a lot of teams that are heavy in recruiting right now or, or following what I would call the heavy recruiting model, uh, but they're missing so many other things uh, that are leading to turnover, that are leading to uh, not just normal agent attrition, but high levels of agent attrition. So uh, I put something out there asking, hey, if you'd like to know uh, what we're doing and how we're able to grow a team the right way, if you will. And I'm not here to say what's right or what's wrong. I just believe there are some things that that as an industry, we can be doing better. And I'll share with you, of course, what those are during our time together. Now, I know that um, we we started a few minutes late, but we also slated this webinar for 75 minutes. So we are going to go right up until 1215 Eastern Standard Time. And, um, you know, that'll be, we'll be able to get all the material in. We budget for about five to 10 minutes of error anyway. So uh, we'll be going through that. Also, uh, I couldn't help myself as I was putting the notes together and collaborating with Taylor, who, uh, for those that are not familiar, one of the reasons why we have her on is because uh, she has moved over from, uh, you know, the last 10 years of being known as the implementer and the operations person in our world to now the director of sales for the Glover agency. So as we talk about building a team, you know, the right way, growing a team the right way, she is in the trenches as well as I am as well, um, you know, doing the actual recruiting, doing the implementation uh, with our with our directors of, of operation and, and, and our staff. And so uh, she will be the one that can elaborate on a lot of what I'm sharing and not only how we implement it, but but of course, sharing uh, the success that we're having from it and how it's working out. So I know we ended up with over 1,500 of you registered for this, and that tells me that the industry is hungry for this, and I'm glad you're on uh, watching this live. It's most likely we'll end up sharing this through the podcast, so some of you will end up listening uh, to this in the podcast later. So thank you for listening, for those of you that are listening through the Live Unreal podcast. Anyways, let's jump in. My name is Jeff Glover. I've been listing and selling real estate now. This May will be my 21st year in the industry uh, as a salesperson and as a leader in the industry, actually uh, my 18th year as a leader because, I'm sorry, 19th year as a leader because I spent my first 18 months listing and selling and got right into leadership and uh, continued to list and sell during that, that time as well. So uh, if, if you're wondering, and you should, why should I pay attention to what this guy has to say? I'm going to answer that for you right now. And that is because I'm in it with you. Uh, there's a lot of trainers and coaches today who, good, bad, right, or wrong, are regurgitating a lot of things that they have either done in the past or what I think is actually worst, uh, sharing with you uh, the success that their other clients are having. And the reason why I, I, I believe that's a challenge is because uh, you know, we obviously uh, own and run a coaching company, the fastest growing company, co coaching company on the planet, Glover U, obviously you're familiar. Uh, and, and I know that our clients don't always tell us the truth. And so when what happens in those settings is coaches are regurgitating things that people are saying, a lot of that is ego. Uh, a lot of what they're saying is, oh, I'm, I'm killing it over here with this. And are you though? What does the profit look like? What does killing it actually mean? And so again, just to answer the question, if I'm, if I'm in your shoes and wondering why should I pay attention to what Jeff has to say, and of course, Taylor's going to add some, some examples as well, it's because we're in it with you. That's the difference, all right? You can follow someone who has, uh, has done. You can follow someone who has never done. At the end of the day, you would follow us because we're in it. We know what you're going through right now. I think in the last 30 days, uh, Taylor told me, and I, I actually said, that's not, that's not, that number seems a little high. That can't be accurate, right? In the last 30 days, as a team, not a brokerage, a team, we've onboarded 14 producing real estate agents in the last 30 days. Now, of course, there was 60 to 90 days of work before that to do so, which we're going to share with you some of that work, make that 15, uh, she just said. 
producing agents, not newbies, not brand new licensees, agents already producing, agents that are already on teams that they're leaving or their solo agents deciding to be with a team. So I'm excited to jump in. Before we do, of course, I got to take a few minutes and share with you. I'm not going to go through all of our free resources. Most of you are, are familiar uh, with all of those. Uh, but if you're on as a, a first timer, before you comment, all right, change your in the settings because a lot of you are chatting us and that's great, but it defaults to all panelists. So during this session, during this webinar, change that to all. So that way everyone on the webinar can see. Now, if you want to send something to us that you only want us to see, that's fine, then don't change it. But if you want everyone to see your comments before you hit send on the message, make sure you're changing the setting to all, uh, everyone, I'm sorry, everyone, not just all of panelists. So if you're on a Glover U webinar for the very first time, I want to know where you're joining us from. Go ahead and put your city and state in there and also follow up after that first timer. I want to see where all of our first timers are at. Go ahead and drop your city and state in the chat and put first timer after it. Now, if you've been on these before and you're not a first timer, I want to see where you're joining us from. So still put your city and state down there, but don't put, you don't need to put first timer, obviously, since you're not a first timer. So I want to see where everyone is joining us from. It's always fascinating to see people from all over North America, the US and Canada is heavily represented. We also have people now joining us from Mexico, uh, joining us from, from across the pond. So it's great to see uh, everyone and, and where you're joining us from. Look at all those cities and states. Awesome. Kalamazoo in the house. I love it. All right. So a couple of quick resources I want to get out of the way. Most of you are probably familiar. Uh, and, and, and from a leadership standpoint, you should be taking advantage of the daily text message. You should sign up all of your agents for that. It is an absolute you know, butt kicker. It's inspirational. It's motivational. A lot of you have signed up for it and are getting the daily messages. But how do you take that and share it with your team? So if, if you're already signed up for it, I want you to write this down. Every single agent that leverage us, okay? What we're teaching is going to help your agents produce, which is going to help them make more money. And hopefully that helps. That means you're going to make more money. So the number one resource that agents are giving us good feedback about is the daily text message. Are you guys receiving the daily text message? Are you getting that daily text message? Well, how do you, how do you share it with your people? If you text the word morning, to five, five, four, four, four. Text the word morning. It's right there in the chat to five, five, four, four, four. We have so many teams and brokerages across the country. They make that part of their onboarding. You know, there's like 10 things on their onboarding. One of them is, is signing up for the daily text message. It's free. Take advantage of it. I'm only going to share things that are going to inspire them. I'm only going to share things that are informational, things that'll help motivate them. Get signed up for it. Get your people signed up for it. Take advantage of that and leverage us for that, especially the free resources. The second resource I want to make sure all of you leaders are using because there's tons of good sales meeting information, and that's the Unreal Life magazine. In fact, the brand new copy just came out. I don't know if Taylor has one on our desk by chance. Uh, we got a gr so many great articles in there. Uh, the most, most recent one was from John Maxwell. We've got top producers across the country sharing information. Sign up your agents for that. We send it out for free. All right. We get, we pay for the postage. We pay for the printing. If you just go to gloveru.com forward slash mag, gloveru.com forward slash mag, literally the, the, the latest copy is hitting mailboxes right now. If you're not signed up for it, get signed up for it. And if you have agents that join you, make sure they get their hands on it. There's all sorts of great information and things that they can do to inspire them to produce. I know a lot of brokers and team leads around the country will take that magazine and they'll actually take articles from it and use them as sales meeting topics. They'll take articles from it and use them as, as things to bring up during their meeting. So take advantage of that. Okay, let's jump in. So for those that aren't familiar, again, Jeff Glover from Detroit, Michigan. I've uh, been listing and selling real estate 21 years. We've got Taylor on, uh, also from Detroit, and she's been with us now for 10 years. And she's had pretty much every role that you could have uh, in the company on the operations side. And now she is kicking butt on the sales side. and She's leading uh, the Glover agency sales team. So why is this topic important right now? 
So many teams are going through normal attrition because the market has shifted and things have changed. And of course, I know the last two weeks, don't tell me the market. Jeff, what are you talking about? The last two weeks have been crazy. I know the last two weeks have been crazy. I'm in it with you. All right. That happens when the weather breaks a little bit. Everyone's freaking out that the market's going crazy right now. Well, that always happens when we have a couple string of days or a week or so of nice weather. All right. So hopefully we have a hot spring. I'm wishing for that, that for all of you guys. But here's what I know. Teams are experiencing a ton of attrition right now, and it's happening because a lot of brokerages today are behaving more like teams. And what does that mean? A lot of brokerages today are providing the value that the teams are supposed to provide. And so therefore, if a brokerage offers similar value to that of a team, well, then the team isn't as it doesn't stand out as much. The team doesn't have as much value in the eyes of a real estate agent. So we're seeing a lot of normal attrition that we would have. We saw a good bit of, of maybe excess attrition because the market cooled off and you had, you know, if you have a producer, you know, that's normally used to doing 3 million a year and they go down to one and a half because, because the market uh, goes down, they're going to start looking at other options. So we did have extra attrition because of that, but we're also getting a new wave of attrition from brokers who are providing more value than they have in the past. In fact, you know, for many of you, you probably weren't around during these years and I wasn't around, but I've studied the industry in the eighties and nineties, especially in the, in the eighties, the brokerages provided just as much value as teams did. It's kind of fascinating how that kind of flip flop. Well, guess what? Brokerages are starting to provide more value again, because they're finally figuring out how to compete with teams. So if you're leading a team, you need to pay extra close attention to everything we're talking about today, because trust me when I tell you the traditional brokerages are, are starting to compete with you at a higher level than they have been before. And if you're leading a brokerage, well, take some of these ways I'm going to share and deploy them as a brokerage, because if teams are doing it, you can probably find a way as well. Okay, so I think I mentioned that we were going to have nine ways uh, to 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 build your team the right way. I think I ended up with like 12 or 11 or 10, something like that. I always go over. I always have some extra ones in there. So let's go ahead and jump in. Everyone should have a workbook. Get that workbook printed out. I gave away our recruiting scripts. All right. I don't usually do that. In fact, if, if you've been on our webinars before, you know that I, I don't think I've ever given away our recruiting scripts. All right. So get that workbook printed out because it's got all of our recruiting scripts in there. Let's jump in. All right. And drop that, drop that in the chat. There it is. There's the workbook in the chat. Get that printed. You, you can have it printed right now as we go through. There's plenty of room to take notes in there. And there's a ton of free resources in there, much of which I did not get to because I want to get to the content. So let's go. Number one, ready? You want to build your team the right way in 2023 and beyond? You want to be surrounded by people that you would show up to work with every day? You want to be surrounded by people that you're excited to show up and work alongside? You want to surround your team members? with people that they're excited and proud to work next to, then start with number one, ready? Get real clear about who you are, comma, what you stand for, comma, what you believe in. Get real clear about who you are, comma. We start basic and we get, you know, some people are like already, oh man, this is going to be so basic. No, no, no. Trust me. We get, we get to the good stuff. We're sharing the goods, but we got we to gotta start with this one. Get real clear about who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in, and put together a list of people that you'd like to be in business with, from leadership to agents, and carry it around with you everywhere you go. Get really clear about who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in, and put together a list of people that you'd like to be in business with from people in leadership to agents and carry it around with you everywhere you go. I'll never forget when I first started, I started with an index card of affirmations. I had an opportunity to work for Paul and Kathy Schweitzer. They ran the largest Cobalt banker in the state of Michigan. They had 16 offices and they had, they encouraged all of us managers to have an index card, a little three by five index card, of affirmations, things that we wanted to that things we we wanted to think about every single day. I will I will grow my company by this. I will profit this. 
we will add X amount of agents. So all the things we wanted to accomplish as daily affirmations, I will sell X amount of homes this year. And I carried this index card affirmation uh, around with me everywhere I went. Uh, it, it was, it, it was like, it was like next to my cell phone. When I got home from the office, I would set it down, you know, next to my keys and I would take it with me everywhere I went. It was torn. It was tattered. And as time went on, I thought I could make better use of this. So the second iteration of my affirmations index card became a business plan. I had a simple three by five index card and a business plan, just the highlights of my business plan, how many agents I wanted to add what my gross would be, what my net would be, what my profit would be, what our volume would be, what our units would be. It would, it would be just a short little kind of business plan on a three by five index card. And then that advanced to on the other side of it. And I laminated. This time I got smart, okay? Because what, what happened was I found myself rewriting them because they'd get torn, they'd get tattered, right? So then I, I got smart. And I laminated it so I didn't have to rewrite it every single time. But on the back, I had my hit list of all the agents I wanted to be in business with. I'm suggesting you do the same. Create a hit list from agents to leadership of people that you want to be in business with. But first, you have, you have to identify who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in, because you want to find people that match those traits, find people that match those characteristics, find people that fit your culture, identify people that you think would be good to be in business with. Write it out, carry it around with you. That's number one. Number two, do not lead. You want to grow your team the right way? Don't lead with leads. Man, we're seeing so much turnover and attrition and, and agents that are leading teams that are absolutely miserable because, you know, Zillow Flex is, has gone out and got somebody else now and now I got to compete over here. Well, hello, I've never coached and trained anyone to lead with leads. Stop doing it. I wrote down, if your value proposition has leads in the first sentence or two, prepare for lower, turn or lower profits and higher turnover this year, period. If your value proposition has leads, we provide leads. If that's in the first couple sentences that you share, you can prepare for lower profits and higher turnover this year. Instead, make it lower on your list of values. Make it lower on your list of reasons why people will join. And guess what that does? That's going to put pressure on you and your leadership team to make the rest of the value proposition stand the test of time. It's going to force you to provide value in other ways. For my team leaders who are on, you say, well, when I think about my value proposition, leads are like one of the number one reasons why someone joins. Number two reason, by the way, leads have never been more than the fifth or sixth reason within our company of why someone joins us. They're in there. We talk about them, but that's reason number five. That's like bonus. That's like gravy on top. Watch this. If they join you for leads, they will leave you for leads. They join you for leads. They will leave you for leads. They will find someone else that's providing more leads. And you know what happens? Your top producers look up and say, gosh, they're adding all these agents. That's going to be less leads for me. Well, you've created that culture. If you create a culture of leads and the leads go down, they're going to lead you, leave you for leads. What are you doing, dummy? Stop leading with leads. It can be part of your value proposition. It better not be in the top three. If you're going to coach with us, if you're going to grow a profitable business that's longstanding and, 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 and making a difference in the industry and your community that you serve, you're not going to lead with leads. You're going to teach agents how to fish. You're going to train them so well that they could leave you, but they won't because your value proposition is so strong. Taylor, do you want to add maybe just, you know, your two cents on, on that? And obviously yeah. you've been around <laughs> our business for 10 years now, and you've seen, you know, agents come and go. You've seen, you know, our value proposition, how it differs. What's, what's going through your mind right now? Yeah. So I actually have a video that I'm going to play that shows what our top five actually are. Uh, leads is not, it's, that's like number six, number seven. And, you know, it's really important that, um, you know, when you are meeting with someone actually being clear, you know, like I can't tell you the amount of people that I've actually turned away from the Glover agency that said, if you're only joining us for leads, we're not the right organization for you. 
because of all of the other things that we provide that help you become a better person, you know, a, a, a better person at home for your family, you know, that help you grow your business in other ways. Now, is leads one of them? Yeah, that's number six and seven. But that there's five reasons before that, that you should see a value in our organization that can help you grow um, even before that becomes a question. So if it's okay with you, Jeff, I'll actually just play it's a quick, yes. you know, okay. Please. And this is something, just so you guys know, once you get really dialed in with your value proposition, there's, there's two things going on here. Number one, you've got to have a dialed in value proposition. And number two, you got to be able to figure out how to promote it. So this is something that we're, that we use to promote our value proposition to the public, to the agents that we want, to our target audience, to, to the people that we want in our world. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Taylor Kerrigan and I'm the director of sales at the Glover Agency. We have five key core values as to why people join our agency and stay in our agency for as long as they do. We actually have a hall of fame wall that has associates who have been with us five plus and 10 plus years. These are also our top producers. It's no surprise that they stay with us for as long as they have because of these values that we have at our organization, which I'm going to share with you today. First is our training. We believe that it is our job as a leadership team to make you the absolute best trained salesperson possible, whether you're meeting with a buyer or a seller. We have a daily accountability call that allows you additional training. We have a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10 a.m. training for 30 minutes for hands-on improvement for your skills. And then we also have a monthly training where once a month our team gets together for a half a day and does everything we can to help make you a better salesperson. And that's our training at the Glover Agency. Our number two core value is our culture. We want to create an environment that you enjoy coming to work every single day and you love the people that you work with. And it's also no surprise that for the last four years, we have won the coolest place to work as rated by the Detroit Free Press. It's the environment that we create and we cultivate with the top producers that we have. And that's our second core value. Our third is accountability. We know that agents get in the business for freedom and flexibility, and unfortunately, it's also sometimes the reason why they fail out of the business. And so we hold you as accountable as you would like to be to your goals to help you exceed them and live your unreal life. We also have a marketing department, which is our fourth key value. We believe in building a brand within our brand, and we will do everything we can to make you a local community celebrity, whether that's to your database or in your own neighborhood. We provide marketing, social media, video, everything we can to put you on the next level and continue to build your personal brand. And last but not least, we have a world-class operations team to provide you the support and leverage that you need for your business. We know that your highest and best use of your time is meeting with buyers and sellers, so we take care of everything else behind the scenes to allow you to do what you do best. Those are the five core values at Glover Agency that we provide for our agents. If you'd like to learn more about them, visit gloveragency.com forward slash careers. So taking something like that, and now okay, you got to record yourself doing it, and you don't have to have music and all this other stuff behind it, but now getting it out to the public. How many people in your market know what your value proposition even is? It's one thing to dial in your value proposition, which many of you need to do, but it's another thing to get it out to the world. Make sure people are talking about what it is. And that's number two. Number three, since we've decided we weren't going to be leading with leads, we're not going to lead with leads anymore. Got it? Build your value proposition around what agents actually want today. Ready? What is it? A life. How can you help them live their life to the fullest? What can you do to take stuff off their plate so they have more time to either sell more homes and or more time with their family and friends? We created our own live unreal formula. I mean, think about that for a second. We created a formula focused on helping them live a better life. What's your formula for helping them live a better life? How could they be a better father? How could they, by being affiliated with you, make them a better, better mother, a better brother, a better wife, a better, a better leader? What, who do they become because of their affiliation with you? Can you articulate that to me? Can you explain how that is? You have to remove this idea that at some point, okay, you have to remove this idea that most will leave you at some point and exchange that with your job is to build with them for life. This idea that, hey, it's just the industry, you know, keep recruiting. Watch, you follow that, you're gonna have a miserable life because, and you're gonna have even more miserable staff. 
Don't get me wrong. Recruiting is absolutely one of the best ways to grow a business, but it's not the only way. It's not the best way to grow a long-standing, profitable, stable, steady business that you're proud of, of the people that are within it and that you're working alongside of. I look at so many people today and it's like, man, what are you doing? You're missing a huge opportunity. Stop thinking that you're a stepping stone. Create an opportunity for them to build with you for life. You're still going to have some people come and go. Don't take it personal. But why are we of the mindset that it's okay every three years we turn over? It's okay every five years, every two and a half years we return over. Why is that okay? Since we won't be leading with leads, build your value proposition around what agents actually want today, a life. Number four, stop making everything about you and make it all about them. Oh my gosh, you guys, they want to be a brand too. They want to be celebrated. I see so many of our competitors making videos and stupid reels and all this stuff that everything's about them. They want that too. If everything's about you, how could it be about them? Think about how you could make it more about them. Actually help them build a website. Actually help them create a logo. Yep, I know that goes against conventional wisdom. The days of everything's about the team, the team, the team, the team, those are gone. Now, there's no doubt if you've got brand equity in your market, you're not, I'm not suggesting that you remove your brand equity. What I'm suggesting is that you make room for their brand within your brand. You've got to figure that piece out. They're going to leave you and go on their own if you don't provide it for them. You've got to help them with that. Stop making everything about you and turn, instead make it all about them. Taylor, did you want to add anything to that? I, yeah, and I, you could probably see that I was like holding back because this is one of the biggest complaints that I'm hearing right now in conversations with people who are looking for other opportunities. Their number one thing is, A, I never see my lead agent or my team leader or you know the team owner, whatever, never see them and everything is about him or her meaning, you know, they are flashy. They're always saying, and it's the number. <laughs> I can't fathom how people will constantly say, meet my team or mm -hmm. my team did this. This yeah. person's on my team. I mean, I've worked with for you for, you know, or worked with you, Jeff, for, for 10 years. Never once have I heard you say my, it's Never our once. team. Nope. Right. Our team, our agency, our group did this. It is never my and the moment you make it about you, you've lost. And I can't count how many people hit don't hit this mark and consistently make it all about them. And people don't want to work for someone who has that large of an ego. You know, if you're posting pictures of your car and your watch and all of this thing, all these things, and afterwards you're saying, my team, my team, my team, you're not in it for the right reasons. And people are starting to notice. And I'll tell you, listen, at the end of the day, you know, I, I encourage, you know, we teach the agents to post when they're having fun, post when they're at conferences, post when they're on vacation, show people that you have a life, but you have to be very careful about that. If you're running a team and you're the only one going on vacation, uh, you might want to dial back the social media uh, of you being on vacation. Well, everyone's back at the ranch working for you. Uh, I, I have intentionally done this for years, especially starting out. Uh, now, of course, most of you probably won't be surprised to hear that that I love work is a vacation for me. So I don't vacation uh, as much as probably many people do because I, I don't need to get away. There's no real need to get away in my mind. But if if I was a vacationing person, you better believe I would absolutely di be dialing back the amount of uh, extra social media of me being on vacation all the time. For those of you that take a lot of vacations and post a lot of vacations, you have a right, if, if you have agents that are also in the position and they're taking a lot of vacations or you're going on vacation together, whatever, that's cool. That's different. But man, you, you, can't, you can't be showing that you're living this big extravagant life on their backs. Instead, show them how they can live a big extravagant life on your back. Mm -hmm. All right, that's number four. Number five. Now, really quick, Jeff. Actually, I just wanted to do a quick share screen. So this is an example of what we're talking about, about build, helping your agents build a brand. This is one of our top producers. And, you know, Jeff, one of the, the greatest things about you is that you have no intention or desire to be at the forefront. And that really does allow associates to build their own brand. So this is one of our agents, Sean Kanja. As you can see, he's branded right alongside us. You know, we promote him just as much as, as he promotes, you know, that he's affiliated with us. And this really allows him, SK Sells is his brand. 
you have to be okay as a team leader, as an owner of an organization to put your people on a pedestal and allow them to build their brand so much so that you help them do so. And this is a prime example of doing that and taking that off of his plate or you know their plate and allowing them that opportunity to build their own brand. Sorry, I know you're moving on to the next well, point. Yeah, because what happens is they watch you and they see what you do and they want that. So mm -hmm. if you're if 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 they're gonna feel like restricted by being affiliated with you, you're just giving them a reason to go on their own. All right, number five. We need to make sure agents and staff understand the benefits from recruiting growth. This is a big one. You need to make sure agents and staff understand the benefit from recruiting growth. You have to understand that more sales equals more misery for your operations team. Okay, just, just know that deep down, the average operations person looks at more sales as more misery for them. So how do you get their buy-in? The operations team is the absolute keeper of your culture. How do you get them excited when the company grows? And more importantly, how do you get the agents excited because of your growth? You have to explain to them that a percentage of your revenue a very high percentage for most of you, if you're running a margin of 20%, let's just say, or 25%, or maybe even 15% on the low end, uh, a high percentage of your every dollar that comes into the company, we can show our agents, guys, we reinvest. By the way, we operated a 20% profit margin for those that are wondering. We reinvest 80% of every dollar that comes in back into our agents' businesses. You have to be able to articulate that and show them where that money goes. It goes towards staff and paying them healthy. It goes towards marketing. It goes towards helping them with their databases. It goes towards, you know, the list of things. So guys, the more agents that we can bring in and the more revenue that we can create, well, then that's the more 80 cents of every dollar going back into something that's going to help you. You have to make sure your agents and your staff understand the benefits from your growth. That's number five. And you got to be able to articulate that. Number six, you have to be able to teach your agents the next level. Just go ahead and write down, teach my agents the next level. You want to build a team the right way? Don't think that they're going to just be content with being a salesperson their entire career with you. If you have a talented person and, and they start, you know, getting the itch to go to what's next, why can't that be what, why can't that what's next be with you? Now for us, for a long time, our what's next was maybe they become a real estate investor and I partner with them on their investments, or maybe they get into leadership, or maybe they become a coach, or, or maybe they decide they want to build wealth and they want someone to teach them how to build wealth. What is their net what's next in your organization? What does their what's next look like? What could you create so that way you're removing all of the reasons why they would leave you? Answer that question. What do you offer that's what's next for them? Taylor, do you want to add anything to that one? No, I, I mean, I have a, a quick video. I won't play the full thing, but it's, it, you know, I've always learned in our organization that it was our job as leaders to create a world so big that their unreal life fit inside of our unreal lives. And we've always, you know, when I'm sitting down with someone and having a conversation about who they want to become and, um, you know, what they want as far as production, the conversation is actually, who are you going to become as far as your best version of yourself by being here? And sometimes it may be developing your leadership skills. Sometimes it may be, you know, like you said, maybe it's it's flipping properties and having additional streams of income for your family. And it's our job as leaders or anyone who wants to, you know, have a value proposition like this to always be thinking about what's next and how you can help them become, you know, that next version of themselves and creating those opportunities for them to do so within your organization. Because if you don't have them, they will look elsewhere. And that's yeah. why we have an agent leadership council. That's why, you know, we have team um, lead agents. And that's why we have productivity coaches and mentors to give people those opportunities to raise their leadership lid or go to the next level instead of only selling real estate. You know, after you've done that for a while, maybe you're tired of it and you want to experience something else. You have to create a world that they can achieve that by working alongside you. Yes. And that's because, by the way, many of you have modeled it. You've shown them. That, that you can go out and do something else in addition to listing and sell real, selling real estate. So how can you provide that for them? How can you actually help them with that? So they don't have to leave you to go get that. That's number six. Number seven, write this down, please. Number seven, 
operate operate from if you want to build your team the right way in 2023 operate from the Glover U leadership business plan operate from the Glover U leadership business plan and use our recruiting scripts operate from the Glover U business plan and our recruiting scripts now, the good news is for all of you, I'm giving one of those two away for free, okay? It's in your workbook. Get it printed out, all right? It's, it's in here. It's in, it's in the back, all right? All of the objections, our first call, our second call, all of our recruiting scripts are in here. Get this thing printed out. It's got value. Use it. We use them. This is what we use. You want to know what scripts we use? This is it, all right? We use them today. The Glover U business plan, I'm going to be unveiling that for the first time, because we've never shared the brokerage or team business plan ever. I'm going to be unveiling that for many of you that are already signed up for lead up, which I'm sorry. Yeah. For lead up, which is nearing getting sold out. Last year, we sold out uh, 30 days in advance. We're about a month away from that. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Taylor, can you just drop the lead up, lead up uh, domain in the chat? Love you.com forward slash lead up. I'm going to be unveiling the exact leadership business plan at the event. So for those of you that are coming, you're good. All right. And for those of you that are not signed up yet, check it out. That's number seven. Operate from the Glover U leadership business plan and use the recruiting scripts that we provided you. Number eight, build a reputation. Build a reputation as the business builder in your market. I'll explain what I mean by that, but just write it down. Build a reputation as the big as the business builder in your market. Build a reputation as becoming known as the business builder. In other words, they you build a reputation because of the masterminds you put on, the webinars you put out, the events that you host. All right, it doesn't have to be like a big Glover you thing, okay? Because we don't even use that for recruiting. I can't use that for recruiting, otherwise, people from other brokerages won't show up. It's so fascinating to me. Over 50% of our audience is now represented by companies outside of the company that we're affiliated with. Why? Because we don't do any recruiting there. That's not what that's for. But you can. You can put on events for that purpose. You can provide value for that reason. We don't because, you know, Glover U is a, is a different entity for agents and teams, you know, from all brokerages. But you can. Why not? Create something. Use it as a recruiting tool. Become known as the business builder in your market. Create that reputation for yourself. How can you do that? Obviously, you can do that through social media, your personal social media profiles. You can start small. I mean, start by doing something at your board of realtors. You can build a reputation of becoming the business builder in your market over time. That's number eight. Number nine. Make it appear as if there's a success story all the time. You want to build your team the right way in 2023? You want to attract people that are motivated by recognition, which by the way, typically are your top producers, then recognize your people like crazy. A good example of this would be if you have a team meeting where you're recognizing six people after the team meeting, don't just share all six people who won an award. Take the next six weeks and share one per week or share two a week for the next three weeks. Make it appear as if there's a success story all the time in your world. Stop. Remember, stop making it about you. It's about them. Number 10, the onboarding process. Your first 30 days today are make or break. People's expectation, our expectations are so high in the onboarding process. The first 30 days are make or break. I don't want to see a list of things that you have them do in the first month. I want to see a detailed list by day, day one. Day two, day three, day four, day five. At the end of your first week, here's everything you should have accomplished. Week two, day one, day two, day three. I want specifics, not just a list of things that they're going to have to do. I have in my notes here, for those of you joining us at Lead Up, we are covering that from start to finish. We're going to give you our first 30, 60, 90 days of an agent joining our team so we can do the heavy lifting for you. For those of you that aren't, aren't coming to lead up, I'm going to make a suggestion. Just have us, just leverage Glover U for that. You could literally 
have your agents go through SLS. Our SLS program is, by the way, 50% of our onboarding because it's all the sales training, all the sales training that we either don't know how to provide or don't have the time to provide. Let me do the heavy lifting for you. It's neutral. All right. There's no talk of, of our company in it at all. It's, it's all for team leads like yourself, agents leading teams or, or brokers like yourself leading brokerages. Leverage if I could just that. also add, Jeff, you know, too, when it comes to training, you have to have someone who owns it, right? Because the, the number one thing that I'm seeing right now is that a lead agent, you know, when they bring someone on, it's just fitting in the training. Okay, I can give you 20 minutes here. I can give you 20 minutes there. Hey, can you come in tomorrow? Um, you know, and not following an outline schedule. At the Glover Agency, you know, one of the, the we can't succeed at Glover U with training if we don't also succeed with training in our backyard first. And it's important that when we bring someone on, you know, we have someone who it is your number one job to make sure that this person feels comfortable and confident with their training. So much so that once a week they get a survey that's anonymous that asks them, how comfortable did you feel with this? Do you feel like you actually grasped that explanation or that understanding? You know, do you feel like you got this at, to the highest degree? Did we deliver unreal training for you? And it's that important. I mean, even after our team meetings, we send out a survey right after the team meeting. Hey, was this a good value of your time? What'd you love the most? What, you know, should we add next time? You have to have someone who owns that training and takes it so seriously because that's going to be the difference with getting them into a higher degree of production. And it's the most important in that first 30 days. And then what you want to hold your training accountable. Well, how do I hold my training accountable? Well, everyone on this call either listening to this later if we if it's on the podcast and you're listening to the audio or if you're watching this live, everyone on this call should know what their per person productivity it is. Per, per person productivity is. I was taught that early on in 2005. Again, I, I know I bring up her name a lot. Kathy Schweitzer, we're so fortunate. She's now a coach for us and she's leading, uh, leading our brokerages today. Per person productivity. Jeff, what, what is your per person productivity? How do I figure that out? Take your total units closed. Minus your closings, if you're heavy in the business, if you're the, if you're the top producer on your team, minus your transactions, take your total units closed, remove what you're doing, divide the balance based on how many people you have. By the way, our per person productivity, 31 in 2022, 31 transactions per agent on average in 2022. Hold your training accountable to not 15 deals. You don't want everyone on your team to be broke. Somebody told us, told us the other day, the top producer of another large team in our market makes less than hundred thousand dollars a year. That's not good. You don't want that. You want to be known as the team that produces hundred thousand, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000 income earners. Why not? Number 10, or I'm sorry, number 11, do for one, do for all, no special deals. Do for one, do for all, no special deals. Everyone's on the same split. Everyone's on the same plan. I don't care how long you've been with us. Or if it's your sister. Or if it's my sister. That's right. No special favors. People say all the time, well, there's got to be some favoritism. Yeah. Do you want to know what our favoritism is? It's we follow this policy. And I'd recommend you all do the same. If you're going to have leads as part of your value proposition, which by the way, I didn't say it shouldn't be. I just said it shouldn't be one, two, or three. If leads are going to be part of your value proposition, as it is ours, it's number six. Well, how do I get leads? Use this policy. You'll create a culture of producers. You'll have longer lasting agents. You'll have, eight, you'll have less turnover. The more business you self-generate, the more opportunities you get, period. The more business you self-generate, the more opportunities you get. And that's public. The more business you bring in, the more opportunities you're going to get from the company. There's a reason why in our offices we have TVs that say closed, self-generated business. So everyone knows how much everyone's bringing in. So that way when they say, well, how come Mary's getting all the leads? Have you looked at the sales board so far this year? Mary's bringing in the most business. Don't do it based on, you know, I, I know it's tough as a team lead. You want to like throw a dog a bone and help out a struggling agent when they're starting. You don't want, that's a slippery slope because next thing you know, your top producers look up and they're getting just as many leads or less. And guess what they do? They start looking around. 
They don't care about me anymore. They just care about the growth. They just care about recruiting. They're just helping these newbies. It's very black and white here. The more business you bring in, the more opportunities you're going to get. And we do it a month at a time. So for instance, for the month of April, we have a list and it gets weighted. We weight our round robin every month. And it's based off what the agents did in March. The more business they self-generated, the more opportunities they're going to get from the company, period. What does that also do? That puts pressure on our mentors. That puts pressure on our coaches. That puts pressure on our leaders to make sure the newer agents are getting up and running through self-generated business as fast as possible. You don't get a lead from the company when you first start. In fact, you don't get a lead until you bring in your own deal. Isn't that interesting? What does that do? That puts pressure on them to go out and find their own deal. Do for one, do for all. By the way, if an agent wants more, if you have a $10 million producer, $15 million producer, you know, they'll start asking for things like, well, can I get my own assistant? Or can I have someone do this for me? Could I have my own showing agent? Could I have someone make calls for me? The answer is do for one, do for all. If I can make this work for everyone. In other words, if, if I recognize that, okay, how much volume did you do last year? I did 16 million. All right, let me run the numbers and get back to you. If we provide you an assistant, how much more business do you think you'll do? Oh, I think I can do 20 to 25 million a year. All right, let me run the numbers and get back to you. Do some quick math. All right, that's profitable. I can make that work. If you have an increase in business from 15 million to 20 million, I will pay for your executive assistant. And oh, by the way, now I can turn around and make this part of my value proposition. Hey guys, good news. We got a new add to the value proposition. Anyone in the company who closes 15 million or more in the previous calendar year is getting an executive assistant paid for uh, as so long as you see an X increase in business or so long as you maintain this level. Why not? If it makes profit, it makes sense. If I just want to point to out, Jeff, what you said there. It, you specifically said once a policy is made for someone, it's attainable by everyone. Meaning we will come out and say, hey, listen, this is a new value add in the organization. And by the way, anyone can now hit this level and also get that value add if you accomplish X. It's not a special favor. It's not a special deal. It's yeah. now open to everyone. And that is the number one mark that a lot of teams miss is, you know, I'll never forget Jeff the time, you know, what is it? Seven, eight years ago where you actually, you know, showed one of our top producers the door because you refused to make a special deal with them. You know, we went through a time in the organization where we re reviewed our compensation and we had to make some changes. And this person who was your number one producer and they asked for a special deal and you said, what I do for one, I do for all. And I apologize, I can't do that. And you were absolutely okay losing that business because of how much you believe in that statement. And I think that that's a, a very, very powerful point that you, know, you do and, and you truthfully believe in. And I know, you know, one of the things that you mentioned here, we're going to talk about it more at lead up is we do have tiers, you know, we do have things that when you hit certain levels of production, we will reward you. But guess what? It's open to everyone. It's open to someone who's brand new, you know, who joins us. If you hit that level halfway through the year, great. The benefits yeah. kick in right away. I know that you were going to say something on that. No, I was, I was going to say that, that we recognize that this is something, you know, by the way, guys, here's what you do. You know, you hold every time someone leaves your company, you hold an exit interview. We did this several years ago. You compile a list of all the reasons they leave you, why they're going solo, why they're going to another team, why they're going to another brokerage. You make a list of all the reasons. You write them up on a whiteboard. And then your goal is to do everything you can to offset whatever those reasons are. Well, you know, I feel like I'm building your brand. I feel like I'm building the team's brand and not building my own. That's absolutely a reason why they'll leave you. What are you doing to help them build their brand? Well, I feel like, you know, I can't get, get any special, you know, leverage. Um, you know, I can't hire an assistant. You guys won't pay for one. Okay. What, what makes that make sense? And could, is that something you could overcome? And is that something you could offer to everybody when they hit a certain level of production? So yes, as Taylor mentioned, we created these tiers, gold, silver, and platinum. And we're going to be introducing a diamond tier in 2024 to continue uh, ad advancing the value proposition. And yes, that is, as Taylor mentioned, we will cover what's included for agents at those tiers at lead up for those of you that are planning on joining us, but do for one, do for all Taylor, uh, before I go on to the next, are there any examples so far that you wanted to make sure that we shared 
that we we haven't had a chance to to get out because we are we are at the noon hour and we did tell everyone we would end at 12 15 so i just want to make sure there's no other examples or samples that you want to share yeah i do actually have and i won't play i'm sorry the no way um i won't play the full thing because it's long but this is a perfect example and you were kind of talking about it i think in like point four or five where mm -hmm. you know who do you help them become and when you help your associates or your agents become a better version of themselves by being aligned with you, that's really how you get there. You know, you're not just an, a short term agent. This is how we have that Hall of Fame with people who have been with us 10 plus years. And you're going to hear it really quick in this video. And I'm going to just play the beginning. And Jeff, you can tell me when to stop it and we can drop it in the chat for people to watch later. But you need to take those stories and take those success stories and you need to put them in something like this. So that way, when someone's, you know, maybe interviewing at different brokerages or on different teams, they see a who they're going to be surrounded by because top producers want to be surrounded by top producers. People want to be surrounded by people who are doing more than them or doing this, you know, producing just like them. So that way they naturally race. So one, that's one of the benefits to doing something like this, but two, it really captures the culture and how you help your associates grow and how you all grow together as an organization. So I'll just, I'll be quiet. I'll press play. But I just started with Glover Agency a few months ago. Uh, the end oh, we lost the audio. We lost the audio, Taylor. I just started with Glover Agency a few months ago, at the end of the summer. Four years total. Four years? Nearly 10 years. I've been with Glover Agency for 11 years. What attracted me to join Glover Agency was the culture, the coaching, and being able to work side by side with Jeff. He was someone I looked up to. Um, we're not too far off in age, and he was someone in the you know field who was not only you know succeeding in real estate at a high level, but he was also you know giving back to the community through his Glover Heroes program. That's something I really appreciated about the company. I really want to be a part of a successful team, and what Glover Agency has and what it provides is that team environment where people are in the office, they're camaraderating, they're helping, they're picking each other up, helping each other. 2022 has been my best year with the Glover Agency. The biggest difference for me was really getting my mindset in the right place and making sure that I was prepared when I was going to work every day. The most important thing that I've done is been consistent with following up with potential clients over and over again um, and not giving up on that follow-up. Since coming over to uh, Glover Agency, you know, I've closed several deals, uh, multi-million dollars worth of volume, and it's just been phenomenal. The, the amount of uh, people that want to, to work with us at Glover Agency because they know that they have such a successful team behind them. They help me so much from paperwork, social media posts. The training and uh, the team environment gives you excellent accountability. So those two things have been tremendous in my business. Glover Agency has helped me grow my business by surrounding me with people who are doing better than me. So it's always someone I can look up to um, and inspire to be and to get my protection level to. The support staff is amazing. You can feel like you can actually do your job and not worry about the minor administrative tasks that aren't getting done. Now being over with Glover Agency, I have the ability to use the market. Yeah, so basically it, go, it continues to talk about how they're using the benefits of being affiliated with us. Where, where are your interviews with your agents that, where you can share those to the public? Why not take everything that you're doing in your value proposition, find an agent who's winning in a particular area with your value proposition and interview them. Get that video out there. Again, it doesn't have to be professionally put together. You could do it with the phone and, and, and a little stand and, and just press record and or go live on social media. If you've got a great value proposition and you have agents that are winning, don't be a secret team. Don't be a secret company. Tell your darn story about how people are winning using your value proposition. Now, I do have one question that I want to ask you as we've gone through this. When you think about what we've shared today, and we've got a couple things left here. When you think about what we've shared today, honestly, would you join your team or would you join ours?
all things being equal. We're in your market. We're side by side. You have the choice. You can join us or you can join your current team. Now, if you set your ego aside, all right, because of course the ego is going to take over and say, I joined mine. Great. I love that. And by the way, there's a couple percent of you. <laughs> this depends on the split. Somebody said there's a couple percent of you that would say, you know what? No, ours is pretty dialed in, Jeff. Ours is ours is good. And oh, by the way, could you learn a few things from us? Of course you could. But for the rest of us, for the 80 percent, for the 90 percent that say, damn, I probably at this point I join yours. Then absolutely you need to consider getting to our lead up event, which I know so many of you considered and so many of you may be concerned that you'll be rejected or what if I'm not doing enough business or, you know, what if I'm not uh, closing enough volume to be qualified to be there? Well, there's no doubt. And you've seen me talking about it. We turn, and this is honest, you know, cross my heart on this. We turn more people away than we let into that room. Isn't that refreshing? Think about it today. How many ads you get served how many emails you receive of people soliciting your, your come to our conference, come to this event, come learn about wealth, come learn about that, come learn about this. Oh, by the way, we'll give you buy one, get one free. We'll give you 50% off. We'll discount if you sign up by the end of the day today. We don't do that for lead up. Why? We don't have to. Because we want to keep a close knit group of people of high minded, high level people together. You have to have a certain production Level, you have to have a certain agent count to join us at this event. Last year, we capped it at 150. It sold out a month before the event even started. This year, we raised it to 250. And I'm, you have my word, I'm not going higher than that. I'm not going to increase it higher than 250. We have to keep the conversations intimate. I have to be able to have you mix and meet with every single person who's there, who's also having the same challenges that you that's also trying to win at the highest level. By the way, if you're wondering what I'm talking about in the back of your workbook, the last two pages in your workbook, you'll see it's talking about all of the topics that we're going to cover. All right. That's our lead up event. It's only for brokers, owners, team leaders. It's only for people leading teams. People ask the question, what are your splits? We cover that at lead up. People ask the question, what's your entire value proposition? We cover that at lead up. And you're not just going to learn from me. You're going to learn from top top leaders all over the country with all brands. I mean, we got one of the best guys from Century 21. We've got one of the best gals from Real. We got one of the best guys from EXP. We got several independent brokerages and, and lead agents represented that we'll also be hearing from. So it's not just all, you know, me and what our team's doing. You're going to hear other perspectives as well. You're going to hear from some of our top clients who have been following the Glover U system for not one or two years, but three or four years, five years and are implementing it with their teams at a high level. They're gonna share what they're implementing and, and the success that they're having from it. We're gonna have an interview with our director of marketing and our director of agent experiences. And they're gonna be on stage sharing with you, okay, how do we cultivate this culture and get everyone to live it and breathe it? And our director of marketing is gonna talk about everything you can do now, once you have it, to get the word out about it. There's a reason why 15 now, I thought it was 14, 15, Teen producing real estate agents, producers, agents that are already selling homes that have joined a team in the last 30 days. Get rid of this idea that you can only recruit newbies. Get rid of this idea that only new agents will join teams. You're wrong. You got a good value proposition. I can help you make it better. Get to lead up. Now, some people say, well, Jeff, lead up is like kind of expensive compared to your other events. Yeah, because our other events, the tickets are usually $399 or $499. Lead up is $650. Why is it $650? Well, here's what we do. We don't make money on this event, you guys. We take the total of what it's going to cost us and we divide it in this case by 250. Whatever number that comes out to, that's what we charge. We don't make a dime on this. I do it because I want to make a big ass difference in this industry. I want to impact millions to live their most unreal life. I don't do it for the money. I think by now, for those of you that are on, you know that. I know it's going to come back to me later. People have said time and time again, what do you do with all the profits of Glover U? They're all reinvested back into the company. I'm not, I'm not out there. You don't see me touting the millions of dollars that I'm making off of Glover U. Why? Because I give a shit about you and this industry and the leaders in this industry. If you want to see that firsthand, you want to actually feel what that's like, then come join us. We're going to be in Fort Lauderdale, May 1st, May 2nd, May 3rd. You're, only, you're not going to be surrounded by bozos asking about how to keep a deal together. 
You're going to be surrounded by leaders talking about how they just added a $20 million producer to their team or a value proposition that they just added that didn't cost them anything. And now all of a sudden they're recruiting agents because of it. You want to be surrounded by those topics? Come see us at Lead Up. We're covering everything from start to finish on running a successful team and brokerage in today's world. How to compete with brokerages that are starting to act more like teams. How to compete with teams that are playing the numbers game that are starting to act more like brokerages. We're having all those conversations and only those conversations. It's at the gorgeous Marriott in Fort Lauderdale, right on the beach. We specifically pick a real nice resort because we know you guys can afford to be there. And by the way, there might be some people on this session that are thinking they can't, you can't afford it. Hey, you know, Jeff, our company did not have a great first quarter. If you're thinking you can't afford to be there, that's how I know you need to be there. I won't let you down. I promise that. If you go to gloverview.com forward slash lead up, you'll see the entire agenda. You'll see the schedule. You'll see who's speaking in addition to myself and our leadership team. You'll, get to, you'll have the opportunity to have dinner with me and our leadership team. On Sunday night, we do a dinner. On Monday night, we do a welcome reception. On Tuesday night, we do a dinner. It's not just go in a conference room and sit down and take notes. It's an experience. One that once you attend a lead up, you'll never miss another. It is absolutely crucial for leaders of real estate teams and leaders of real estate brokerages to be in that room. If you want to find out how to apply, you go to glovery.com forward slash lead up. It's going to ask you some questions. Here's what I'm going to do, because after this webinar, I know it's going to sell out. We're, we, we were already close to begin with. So because it's going to sell out, because I don't want you to make a rush decision, I'm giving everyone just on this webinar, I'm giving everyone until Thursday at noon to change your mind. So because you're on this webinar, I don't want you to say, Jeff, you told us all about this. And I went home, I checked with my wife or spouse or student brother, I'm turning this into a vacation, whatever. And now it's sold out. Hey, you sold me on it. Now it's sold out. It's going to sell out maybe in maybe today. I don't know. So what I'm doing is for everyone that's on the webinar is I'm giving you three days to decide whether you're coming or not. So go get your ticket. You have until Thursday at noon. In other words, if the flights don't make sense or you can't get out of a, 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 of some, of a commitment you already made, I'm giving you until Thursday at noon to change your mind. So for those of you that are on the fence, and I know with any webinar like this, there's always a handful of people that are kind of hemming and hawing back and forth. If you think there's a chance you may decide to go or that you need to be there, go get your ticket right now. You have my word. It's, I think it's in the workbooks. It's, re, it's refundable. You have until Thursday at noon to decide. All of the details are in your workbook. All right, we dropped that in the chat. It was emailed out to you as well. I just don't want to get a slew of emails from everyone saying, Jeff, I signed up, but it says it's sold out. Or I was sold on going, but it's sold out. So what I'm telling you is go get your ticket now before it sells out. And I'm giving you until Thursday at noon to decide whether you can make it or not. Again, it's glovery.com forward slash lead up. We're going to be down in Fort Lauderdale, May, May 1st through the 3rd, surrounded by only real estate leaders, not wannabes, not posers. Everyone gets scrubbed. We look at your unit count. We look at your volume. We even check your online reviews. Everyone gets scrubbed before they get in. I'm going to surround you with high level people with great culture. And I promise I won't let you down. That is it for nine ways to build a team the right way. We ended up covering 11. Hopefully you guys got some good value today. I can't wait to go into more detail next month in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Let's have a great rest of the day and I'll see you guys sometime soon. Thanks so much.